And I'm in from Techno Buffalo, and this is an extensive walkthrough of the Zune HD interface. We're going to cover pretty much everything except for the internet and the social part of the Zune HD. We're going to save that for uh, later videos. So let's start by turning on the device, taking it out of standby. And the unlock sequence is quite simple. You just lift up the window shade, kind of like you do on, the, on some Android devices. So we bring that up, and let's zoom in on the screen. So the home screen of the Zoom HD is what you're looking at right now. And there's actually two home screens, one on the left and one on the right. And you're going to notice the graphics of the Zoom HD are fantastic. Uh, the, the NVIDIA Tegra platform really brings things to life. Video looks great. Music is, is beautiful. It's really a, a celebration of multimedia, I think, on the Zoom HD compared to, say, the iPod Touch, where it's kind of like a multifunction app device with multimedia, with the internet, with email, and everything in between, the Zoom HD is very focused on multimedia. Now, if you tap on this button here, you can actually jump from side to side. And let me just take you through what you have on the left here. Here we have something called pins. It's kind of like a favorite music section. So you can add any album to the pins or a song or something. Right now, I just have um, this album here, and it's playing through the headphones. Let's go back. And... This shows you history, things that you've done recently. So in the upper left corner is the recent most thing I've listened to or watched or played with. Um, so here we can see that I've listened to a radio station. I had some albums. I was looking at some pictures that were on the device. If we go down, we can see the things that I've recently added to my Zune HD. So recently I've added a teaser from The Office, a teaser from Heroes, uh, the TV shows. And then I have some pictures that I've, I've added recently, a new photo gallery, that is, uh, a calculator, chess game, new CD. You can basically go back through your history and see what you've been doing on your Zune, which is a great feature to kind of go back and listen to the same track you were on yesterday, and so on and so forth. So this main menu is very self-explanatory. It shows you music and videos and pictures, and we're going to drill into all of those now. Let's go into music. Zune has a really interesting option for listening to music or for buying music called Zune Pass. It's $15 a month. It lets you download unlimited music to your Zune and to your computer. You don't own the music, but for as long as you pay $14.99 a month, you get to listen to the music, which I think is a really good deal. It's a really good tool for music exploration, so you could download 50, 60, 100, 1,000 albums in a month if you want to and just listen to all the music you want. That said, if you decide to change to the iPod Touch, well, all that music kind of goes away because you're not paying for the Zune Pass anymore. But also with the Zune Pass, you get to own 10 tracks a month of those uh, that you've downloaded. So that could be good. Right now, this sort of screensaver is coming on. So we can sort by artists, playlists, songs, genre, and albums. And we can also swipe to the right or swipe to the left to get to these areas. So let's go to albums and let's go to um, Radiohead. So we get a beautiful animation, and it comes up on the screen. Now, I can swipe to the right to go to the next track, or I can tap down here to bring up the track list. Very beautiful transitions and animations. And from here, I can tap on any of these and play them, and right now it's playing. Now, you saw the screensaver, so let me wait a second, and you're going to see it come up on the screen. And here it comes. So kind of sliding across the screen, it tells you the name of the album, which is OK Computer. And you can have it also say the name of the track. Obviously, the screen's going to shut off in a few seconds to save battery life. But a really awesome looking screensaver. Now for play controls, you can tap the button on the left side. And this is the standard play controls you get. So you can increase the volume, decrease the volume, skip to the next track, go back or press pause. Now you also get this menu in a few other areas. If I tap outside of the album art, I will get that as well. And like I mentioned, you can press this button at any time, whether you're playing a game or you're watching a video, to get that on the screen to adjust the play controls. So let's go back. Artists, Audio Slave. A very quick interface. Again, we can flick back and forth this way, or we can tap down here. And we always press on the top in this corner to go back to the previous menu. Very intuitive. We can add it as a favorite. We can put it on repeat or have it on shuffle. 
Very nice implementation of music on the Zune HD. It really lets you see the album art and experience the music in a very intimate way that I, I don't feel like you get so much on the iPod Touch. Let's go to videos. I've put two videos on here right now beyond the one that comes on here um, out of the factory. It's just a preview or a teaser of The Office. And it's in high definition, so if I had the cable, I could plug it into uh, an HDTV and get 720p video output. But I can tell you, looking at it right now, it's beautiful. If we tap on the screen, we get those play controls that I mentioned. Right now the camera is having trouble focusing on that. And we can make it louder or softer or go to the next video or the next, actually we're jumping ahead in the scene. Okay, so let's go to pictures. And I'm going to go to some of the pictures that I put in here. Recently, I added these pictures. And let me... The accelerometer works extremely fast. Look at that. Very fast. We can flick to the side like we can on the iPod Touch. We can zoom in like so. Zooms very fast. Re-renders extremely fast. Then we can tap on the screen and press play for a nice little slideshow. You get the point. And pictures really, really pop on this OLED screen. It's, it's really beautiful. So let's go back and go back again. And of course, you can sort by date or folder or many different ways. If you have a lot of pictures on your device, you can really keep them organized. Let's go into radio. This has HD radio capability, which is an interesting technology. Basically, it's higher fidelity radio. And if you have a car that has HD radio, you know that you also get some data on the screen. So the radio will tell you what song is playing right now. Similar to RDS, if you're familiar with that. Let me see if I can pull up an HD radio station now. So I'm going to have it scan. No, that's not HD radio. This is, uh, I think we have some HD radio back here. Actually, I have placed um, a little shortcut in here. There we go. Looks like it's not coming through as HD right now because I'm in an area where there's not good signal. What's really neat about the Zune HD radio is that you can pause live radio, and that's a really innovative feature. So it has a few seconds buffer where it will kind of save it, start storing it to memory. Then you can go back and play it when you're ready to listen. So a great way to experience radio that I, I don't think we've seen on any other devices. And from here, we can add this to a favorite or remove it to a favorite. Marketplace is where you go to get apps, and right now there are a very, very limited selection of apps See, it says not connected. It's trying to connect. And here are the apps. There aren't that many. There are about, you know, half a dozen apps. Microsoft says there will be some high-quality games, uh, a Twitter application, a Facebook application. There won't be an SDK for the Zune HD in the near future, meaning developers can't develop their own applications, put them on the Zune HD. They're going to be in-house applications for the time being, which is unfortunate. Um, it's never going to have all of the apps that <clears throat> the iPod Touch does, at least for the near term. So let's go back to the home screen. So we go back to Marketplace. We can download music right from here. Because I have the Zune Pass, I can download any album right now and, and listen to it within a few minutes. So right now, here's new releases from a, very, a variety of, of artists. I'm going to go to Top Songs of, uh, let's see, Top Songs of Rock. Let's see what we have here. Right now we're connected over Wi-Fi. Kings of Leon, use somebody. Okay, so I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to press Add to Cart, yes. And because I have Zoom Pass, it's technically free. I'm going to go back, add some more things to the cart. Let's go with um, this song. Uh, no, not this song. Let's go to Top Albums. Um, let's go to uh, Pop. Uh, Black Eyed Peas, that's a very good album. I'm going to add it, add to cart, and now download all. And you can see where it says downloading, downloading, and it'll take about, you know, 15 minutes probably to download a full album, um, maybe less depending on how fast your Wi-Fi connection is. But you can see how fast this is going. We're at 40% already on this song, and when we're done, the song will be thrown right into our music library. Now, unfortunately, the marketplace won't let you download video which is a shame. You can only do applications and music. 
And if we go into apps, we can see the apps that I've downloaded so far, only three. The calculator's a very basic calculator. Um, let's look at the chess game. And what's re really annoying about some of these apps is that you get an advertisement uh, while you're waiting. Sometimes it's actually a commercial, a 15 second commercial. I guess this is kind of how Microsoft is, is so now it's loading. The apps are kind of slow. I think they'll probably increase in speed with ROM upgrades. So I'm going to do single player. I'm going to resume. I was playing a game of chess earlier. Not doing so well. And you get the point. The graphics are okay. It's a very simple game. It works well, but it's not the fastest. Let's go back to the home screen. And you can see this is taking some time. Sometimes the Zune HD gets a little laggy. Most of the time it's extremely fluid. So we're going to skip social and internet, come back to that later. And let's take a look at settings. So there's not that many settings here. We can go into wireless, um, turn on wireless, uh, see what networks are around. We can change the brightness of the display, the timeout, the screen saver that you saw if it comes on, which probably uses some battery. We can make adjustments to the radio depending on where you live. If we go into music, we can actually turn on the equalizer. But what's annoying about this is that you don't get a drop down list. So if I'm flipping through and I want to get to the last one, which is none, I have to keep tapping this. Oh, and see, I just missed it. So <laughs> you can see why that's a little bit annoying. You can't uh, customize an equalizer. Clock, you can change the, the time. Screen lock, which is the thing you saw earlier. You can enable a pin if you don't want someone picking up your Zoom and seeing the things you have on it. Internet settings are very minimal. We're going to talk more about internet later. Change the language to French, Spanish, or English. And if we go to About, you can kind of see how much space you're currently using on your device and how many pictures, how many videos you have, that sort of thing. So overall, I'm super impressed with the interface on the Zune HD. I think Microsoft, NVIDIA, whoever was involved with this, did a really good job at making things super smooth, super intuitive, very well optimized for this small device uh, with, with this very sensitive screen and easy navigation, very smooth transitions. It's a lot of fun to use, which is really important. We'll be back more covering the internet experience on the Zune HD. We'll also talk about social and do some comparisons with the iPod Touch. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for more, twitter.com slash technobuffalo. That's it for now.